did I like booby trap myself into this anti niche being my niche? And they're like, yeah, why would you do that? Why would you do that? And so we had to kind of go back to the foundations. That was the challenge. And I think every year, this has been my challenge of not forgetting my roots, mm-hmm. not forgetting my roots. And I think the more you are in business, you get influenced very easily because you're sitting and you're part of conversations and you're in these rooms, but these million different voices, which is why intuition is such a powerful thing. And I was noticing how last year I was slowly but surely I'm like intuition back past, Mm -hmm. you know, you're the back seat. And so that was the biggest challenge. And so this year I'm just back to my roots and I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I am not booby trapping myself anymore. And so that was the biggest challenge. And I think um, the biggest lesson here was never, ever forgetting what is your core thing. What is your core work? What is the core thing that you're great at? If you want to make more sales without the pressure to post on social media, I made this podcast specifically for you. I'm Leslie Stevens, and this is the Not an Influencer, an Impact Maker podcast, where we talk about other organic marketing strategies to bring more clients into your online business and the stories of the incredible entrepreneurs who are using these strategies in their businesses every day to create success. You do not have to be an influencer to be an impact maker and build a successful online business. You are going to love chatting with Sway, even maybe even a little bit more than I do, because she is a genuine joy to talk to. And she has so much knowledge when it comes to growing businesses, being in business, communicating with people. So Sway, can you tell us a little bit about you and what you do? Yes. I mean, first of all, that intro was so sweet. Thank you so much, (laughs) Leslie, for having me. To begin off, if I had to describe myself, it would be three golden words. I'm a creative, a mystic, and an entrepreneur. And I usually start with these three because these are the foundations of what my world revolves around in. I'm someone who is incredibly heart-centered and souls aligned. So for me, I'm always listening to the whispers of life and following wherever that takes me, whether, whether that's me expanding my potential or retracting or flowing in a way that just super feels aligned in the sense of me feeling grounded in joy, peace, and continuously feeling empowered to keep exploring my path. So that would be the beginning of who is Sway. But if I had to boil it down to a little bit more specifically for whoever's tuning in today, I take on the hat of a business alignment and strategy guide. My main and most impactful space of playground is translating a visionary's energetics into their signature strategy. And that looks like a million different things. But at the end of the day, I'm someone who who loves empowering people to feel comfortable and feel like they're flowing within their space, however that looks like, and just feeling super confident in showing up however they want to show up on their own terms. So that's my motto. And that's who Sway is in a nutshell. <laughs> And you can tell right away why I love talking to her so much. So how did you get started doing this? Oh my God, that is a loaded question, but my favorite one. Um, My entrepreneurial journey started a decade ago where I had a creative agency, which Touchwood is still running, Kaleidoscopic Vision. Um, Prior to that, I was a special educator for children and adults on the spectrum. And my journey really started feeling completely unfulfilled with the system. And I was that youth teacher just going on about like, oh, you know what? The system needs to change. The syllabus needs to change. This is not enough for the children, for the people that I'm catering to. And I just felt like people who were, you know, my immediate superiors in terms of management were not understanding my language, even though I had tons of proof saying, hey, this is not going to help the children or the adults that I teach down the road 10 years later, 20 years later, or even in the immediate space that they tap into once they leave the the room, the teaching room. And I remember one of my superiors saying, this is the way it is. And I remember saying, 
how though and why though and she just stood there and she was like well it is what it is and I just wasn't fulfilled with that question and I remember gathering people who were working with me whether they were my superiors or they worked with me as my assistants or project managers and saying like how can we do something or create a space that just feels a little bit more aligned for the students and the adults nobody had any ideas because we I started my journey in the Middle East and the Middle East education is looked at from the lens of like it has to be a b c there's no room for a point one or a point two there's no room for like maneuvering right and so I was that loner of sorts that had like these ideas that were called brilliant, 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 but there was just no room for me to implement them. And so I was, I reached this point, I would say that was my pinnacle of frustration and burnout. I got frustration to, I got so frustrated, I got burnt out. (laughs) And I started to feel the the fatigue in my body. Like I no longer felt as happy to get up 5am in the morning and go to work or even feel that like rush that joy of like, oh my God, I'm going to do this. So I was like, okay, how can I do this? How can I change? I started going about and meeting other people who were in the industry. And that led me to meet other people within other industries. And the one thing that everyone kept on reflecting back to me was, you need to share your ideas on a larger platform. And I was like, okay, how do I do this? How do I do this? And someone um, who I still respect so much, she was my mentor for such a long time. She told me in this one networking meeting where we were just like 15 to 20 people and she was like, Sway, it always starts with one conversation. So just focus on that platform being that one conversation. And that's what I started doing. I treated every conversation as a platform for not just my evolution, but the other person's evolution. And that led me to kind of have these other ideas of like, okay, how can I make room for people to share their stories, not from a place of coping, but from a place of healing. That led me to create my creative agency. That led me to opening up my business as a way to success uh, of mentorship, strategy work and alignment. That led me to opening up my digital magazine and just the ventures just kept on rolling in that to the point now, 10 years in with five different businesses. So yeah, that's where it started. What an incredible journey. And honestly, so much of our story kind of aligns because I started out as a registered dietitian. And when I was doing my internship, I was like, these things aren't working for people. Like the systems that are in place, these these kind of mechanisms we go through and just following the step by step. And people can get so stuck in their ways and be like that's just the way we've done it for so long and it's that progressiveness and kind of that little bit of rebellion that feeds into this like whole different world of entrepreneurship that you can really not only bring about change in something like education or something like health but you can also use that to leverage other people's skills and bring them out into the world in such a beautiful way. And there are two really, like, really important things you said in there. But the first question I want to ask you is, did this alignment always come naturally to you, where you support other people in becoming aligned and you take action so aligned with your energy and your strategy all the time? Was this something that you've done since you were little or is this a skill that you had to develop over time this lights me up so much because i feel like it is it's both i've always had an inkling as a child um and i always go back to 15 year old me i left home when i was 15 because i came from a dysfunctional family and i i experienced homelessness for six months and i remember to every time I face a challenge in my life, 15 year old me always comes in as a hero because she is the biggest hero in my life. She took that bold decision that was a decision that, you know, was led up for many, many years of going through whatever. But she took that one decision just from knowing that I know there's more out there for me. I know I can do more if I tap into that more. So I feel ever since I was a kid, I've always been following the whispers of the more, like where is the more, whether that was, you know, through creative endeavors or doing ventures in smaller scales. So that's one, definitely had an inkling. 
But as I grew older, the more I started recognizing more that every challenge was, you know, a step on the staircase. And so every time I was faced with a challenge, it was almost like I was remolded or, you know, redefined into like, oh, okay, so this is what we're experiencing now. How can we transmute that? So it's always been this equation for me. Like, I've never thought like, why is it hard or why is it, um, you know, X, Y, Z, but I've always thought about it as, oh, it's come to me. Now, how can I channel it? So yeah, a bit mm -hmm. of both. Mm -hmm. I definitely think alignment can be developed, especially yeah. when you, you, I used to be somebody who was like, okay, I'm going to follow the rules. I'm going to do everything, take the path everybody told me to say, but I've always had that little, that little inkling to being like, what if I did things a little yeah. bit differently? And when you do those things differently and you kind of bet on yourself and you take that action that is truly in alignment and it shows you the proof that, mm -hmm. hey, you can trust yourself. Hey, the things you want can really work out for you. I feel like mm -hmm. getting those little, those little bits of proof that build up along the way, the more you become aligned and your whole life takes that direction of alignment. And honestly, mm -hmm. that's where I feel like it's super helpful to have a coach who's been through that process before or have somebody by your side that has done that because there are a lot of people who who kind of stay comfortable and they'll be like oh just stay where the other yeah. people have done it before stay stay where it's safe because they want to protect you it's not yeah. always out of something out to get you or hold you back or anything they might genuinely believe that for themselves but that's their belief so proving yeah. it to yourself and having that support system around you to show you what's possible can be just life changing. Now, there's mm -hmm. one other thing that you mentioned, and it was what your mentor said to you. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about the next conversation. And there was something that changed the way that I thought about honestly everything I did. And it was the next conversation could be that breakthrough that you're looking for. So mm -hmm. going out there and having more conversations, whether it's about business, whether it's about getting a client, starting a business, or even something you enjoy in life, anything like that, it's about starting the conversation. And so many people just don't want to kind of open their mouth. They don't want to yeah. put out anything because you're making yourself vulnerable mm -hmm. especially when you're starting a business when you're voicing your thoughts you're you're becoming more vulnerable to other people's opinions so mm -hmm. how do you get yourself in the position to start having those conversations i love this question i want to go back a little bit to the word alignment and connect it to this because i feel like it's so integrated with each other one, I always believe that life is always showing you how can you be more aligned? Because if you were completely aligned, there is no such thing, number one, because then that would be perfection. And perfection truly just doesn't, doesn't exist. So I feel like life always shows you these pathways of like, how can we be more aligned? Because we keep evolving. And I think a lot of people forget that evolution is the most constant state of us being who we are. That being number one, when my mentor told me that, I already had this perception of going about life through those lenses of life is always showing me how to be more aligned. But what, re what really changed for me was going into these conversations and understanding to remove the concept of expectation. So to directly answer is removing that expectation till date, despite having, you know, a seven figure profit coming in every year. It's almost like every conversation I have, I remove that pressure of expectation. I'm not going in expecting anything and I'm not going in thinking they're going to expect anything from me. And that has been the most playful, explorative, fun, and honestly beneficial space on both ends. So I feel like the more we take that challenge and give ourselves that challenge, like how can we just show up without the expectation of like, where is this going to lead us? 
let mm-hmm. the magic come. You know, I feel like for me, that's the thing. Let the magic come, you know, just go into the conversation and focus on being yourself. Because I feel like oftentimes, and I think a lot of people can relate to this, the reason why, and we sh- we talked about this a lot, um, why social media is so it feels so uncomfortable or icky or there's that resistance is because there's an expectation, a clear expectation connected to how social media plays out in in terms of business. And I feel a lot of people get stuck in that frame of, oh, so this is how it's supposed to be. And that pressure itself creates inauthenticity. If you go in with an expectation of something, there's automatically this pressure that leads you to like, I have to show up this way. I need to speak this way. I need to present my idea or thought in this way. So for me, the best way that I have shown up in these conversations and how I do it is allowing myself to be truly vulnerable in my authenticity, not in anywhere else, but in my authenticity by taking off that Mm -hmm. expectation. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that because we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves and other people when we come in to certain conversations with expectations. One of the challenges I gave myself when I started networking was not how many clients I could get or how many contacts or anything like that. My goal was to go in there and see how many people I could get to know and how many stories I could get them to share with me. And then if they ask me about me, that's fantastic. But the more I could get to know other people, like the more naturally those conversations, those relationships evolved, rather Mm -hmm. than going in there, doing my elevator pitch, hoping somebody wants my service, and then Mm -hmm. going back to the drawing board and be like, oh, nobody liked me, which isn't true at all. It's just maybe they're not your ideal client. But If you approached it in a way that removed those expectations, it does allow for so much of that authenticity to kind of flow Mm. through everything. And people are like, oh, I really like Sway. Like she may not be the person I work with, but you bet you I'm going to recommend her for the first person that I know could use her service. Like those are the types of things that you want in conversations and i'm glad you mentioned social media because it does have that kind of transactional reputation yeah and the way that i have even shifted my outlook on social media is using it as something to start a conversation so Mm -hmm. not posting saying oh i got six clients off the back end of that post like okay is this post going to evoke emotion in someone who's going to want to reach out and have a conversation with me who I'm going to be able to get to know more to see if I could even help them so it's reframing the way you look at kind of like your marketing tools and your marketing methods it's how do you get into that conversation because even with so much AI going on That means we do have to lean so much further into the human element of business. People want to buy from people. People don't want to buy from robots. So with that alignment in these conversations and all of these different elements that play into business, how would you support someone who's just getting started and really bringing that human element to the forefront when connecting with potential clients. Yes. When I, I I was just recently telling you, Leslie, when we started this conversation before we hit record, (laughs) that I kind of switched gears. Um, Last year, 2023 was full of lessons. (laughs) I shared this with you. 2023, I went full blown into this concept of multi-potentiality, which I still stick by, believe in, as the forefront of everything that I do. But it has evolved so much into what I do today. And in context of how I support people, I, I'd love to give an example. So one person who was my client, Anthony, shout out to him. Um, <laughs> he's such a sweetheart. We we had this beautiful journey. He came on for an intensive. We had an intensive. It got done. And he's like, I know somebody who I'd love for you to just have a conversation with. Because every person that I know knows that even if it's not something I directly can support someone with, 
I will always have like 10 billion other tools or resources or people that I know or I have within my arsenal, which I'm like, okay, here you go. This is how you can flow. And so he connected me with Michael and Michael was kind of in this space of when we connected, everything was awesome for him. Like he was feeling that high, high. And then we, we decided like, Hey, we're going to get on another call. This second call was an unraveling for Michael. And this happens very, very often when people enter my world. And I don't think this is like in a, in a negative manner, but again, because I hold the energy of realignment and aligning more and more to the core. Oftentimes the people that enter in my world, they're like, okay, I feel activated. Where is this leading me now? And so that second call with Michael, right from the get-go, he was feeling super burnt out. He was feeling super frustrated because he felt like he was in a hamster wheel of like, oh my God, I have to meet this end, this goal. And through the conversation, one of the things that I love doing is just sitting and studying their psyche, their behavior. How does their mindset actually connect with their action? This is probably because of my background as a cognitive behavioral psychologist and an applied behavior analyst, but um, I kind of put a twist to it, you know? Um, I kind of put a twist to it as someone who is gifted as a bloodline oracle, and I, I study that behavior. Um, I don't know if anyone's watched the show um, The Mentalist, it's kind of like that. I can just sit with someone and I'm like, with the way they style their hair, with the way they're looking at something, with the way the language they're using, I already know everything that I need to know. They're like an open book to me. And so I was reflecting back to him what I was understanding. I was like, so I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this. And his first thing was like, holy shit. (laughs) Holy shit. Like the problem is looming. It's right there in his aura in his field and I was telling him he specifically said something about something he was experiencing in his childhood that was how his you know how in his childhood all he always experienced that people kept on putting this focus on the product the output instead of the process and so I quickly you know reflected back to him I'm like do you see how you're doing this in your business do you see how you're bringing this pattern of putting expectation on the output instead of the process. When you're literally, he as a person is all about the process. His entire expertise is around the process, yet his entire focus on business was the output. And so I'm like, okay, that's clearly why you're attracting the wrong people. (laughs) Because the people that want to come into your world, they want to focus on the process. But your messaging, your marketing, your flow, your language, everything is focusing on the output that automatically deters those potential people that are coming into your world. And that's it. Light bulb, light bulb, light bulb. And we were then just flowing into how can we create a strategy that feels in alignment with him. And again, it goes back to what are the patterns that are clearly there that we often as humans overlook because it's our day-to-day life right? Mm -hmm. It's our day-to-day life. We have this pattern that we're doing, even the pattern of picking up our water bottle. We don't even notice like what that tells us about ourselves. But when we understand how those patterns actually translate in our business, because we are the creators of our business, you can often see how that in itself creates this block in your blueprint of your business. So once that was done, I didn't, I didn't have any expectation. I didn't ask for compensation, didn't even pitch him anything. The call was done, done so. The next morning, he sends me a voice note saying, Sway, I have changed my world. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm celebrating you. And this is something that I appreciate a lot because going in without that expectation, the immediate next thing he's like, I want to compensate you for your time. Usually what happens is like, you know, that call leads you to another call, which then you talk about like signing up for something. He's like, no, no, no. We already spent that time. I see the value that you gave me and the changes that happen. I'd love to compensate you for that. And for me, that has been the goal. I no longer support people to just, you know, keep running after the next sale. No, you have given your wisdom. You've given your time. You've given your space. You know, you're worth it. You know, you're worth let the people reflect that back to you and tell you. And this is usually what happens with my clients. 80% of the time when we are done or we're in the process of working together, they get responses like, hey, I love that call. I love those ideas that you gave me. How can I compensate you for that? Mm -hmm. Done. 
that's how things roll in my world. So I would say that's an example of how I support people. I love that so much because you're giving them that experience of working with you and you are showing them what together you guys can create out of what you do. And I feel like that is so lost. Like we need to bring that focus back into the client experience. They're working with you to have an experience to create a result. And when you can show them that before they even buy from you, it makes that sale so much easier. So stepping in to owning what you do and knowing that if you show people, you will be compensated, that changes the game for everyone, for you, for them, for everybody who they want to be a part of your world. And it's because you're just focused on doing what you do and doing a good job at it. And we don't always need to focus on X, Y, and Z, or I'm supposed to have this funnel and everything needs to be perfect and blah, 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 blah. Like go out there, do a really good job at what you do to start out with and everything will start to fall into place. I feel like so much of it is done backwards now. It's like, yeah. okay, what is my messaging? What is what is my content strategy? What is that? All of that's important. Don't get me wrong. All of that's yeah. important. But it also is a natural development out of doing what you do. Like the more you do what you do, the more you're going to know how to talk to people about it. The more people are going to talk about it for you. That's going to give you your messaging. That's going to help you create content. So it's just figuring out what the best place for you is to start and how you want to connect with clients. But I'm very much in to focusing first on the client experience and making yes. sure people are having great experience and showing them that you can do what you say you can, you do, can do because yeah. so much out there now is promising these promises and people aren't getting the results that they're promised. So it's given everybody kind of a bad taste in their mouth. And when you can go yeah. out there and be like, no, I can do this. Let me show you. They're like, oh, mm-hmm. wow, I'm going to pay you even more money. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so, it's so intriguing because you just mentioned like how everything goes backwards. 80 to 90% of the time when people come into my world, they're like, I have a marketing problem. <laughs> and then... <laughs> when we sit down, we find out it's not even the marketing problem. Like either they're not happy about what they're selling because someone told them like, you know, this is the best way. This is what you can sell this way. And it's, it's, it becomes like such a rut. Like I have to copy someone else's model to succeed and it doesn't work. Like you said, the client experience is everything. Most of the time, And especially right now, I feel like there's this fatigue with coaching, with mentorship, with all of these, which has kind of become a facade. A lot of people say that they do X, Y, Z, or they help in certain ways, but they're kind of copy pasting someone else's work and they're not really doing the work. I had one client just this, yeah, just yesterday I got off a call and she was like, I had a group coaching that I was in and they promised me three calls in four months three calls in four months. And I was like, okay, so what was the output? You know, like high ticket, I get the high vibe, high touch. And she's like, I didn't even get what I wanted to get. I didn't even make money that they promised me. And so her first thing was like, you're such a like, you know, breath of fresh air because every single time when someone comes with me, comes to me with like, this is a marketing problem. I have a marketing problem. I'm like, are you sure? Can we just take a minute and get to the bottom of, uh, do you really have a marketing problem? <laughs> you know, let's, let's reach that the shit. real problem first. <laughs> yeah. So I feel you. I'm right there. I'm right there with you about how everything is so backwards today. It's, and it's given a fatigue to anyone who comes into the many layers of the industry of like, oh, okay, I'm lost. I'm not really sure how to go about this. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also a great point to be able to leverage yourself to stand out because people do want to be heard 
and understood. Mm -hmm. And when you can show people that you're the one who will listen to them and Mm -hmm. show them that they can be understood and that you can support them, that will skyrocket you because so many people are not doing that. And I think that's very special to Mm -hmm. not kind of, it's, some people feel like it's not quick and easy. Like social media is sold to us. Like it's going to be this quick and easy marketing hack and you're just going to get people lining up at your door. And really that's a slow burn process. It takes a lot of time to build that trust and build that audience, but it's very quick and easy sometimes to have one or two conversations, like you said, and then they turn into paying clients. Mm-hmm. And ju- you just have to decide where you want to put your time, energy, and effort, and also look at what's actually giving you results. Mm-hmm. Because there are a lot of people who will have one or two conversations with somebody and they got a client, but they're still doubling down on their social media strategy because that's what everyone told them to do. And it's like, look at the facts. And I can say that because I used to be that person until I looked at myself and made the decision, like, this is the way I can grow my business. I have the proof. I just need to trust myself and stop trying to follow all of these, quote unquote, proven paths that may have worked for somebody else. And that's fantastic. But that doesn't mean I can't create a path that works for me. Yeah. So in building all of these extremely successful businesses, have you met any challenges that you kind of didn't expect to face? Yes, so many. Where would I even stop? <laughs> I think I think the whole point of being in business is clearly understanding that once you hit a milestone, you will there's always going to be obstacles to reach that next milestone. And if it doesn't happen, (laughs) then there's a foundational problem (laughs) because the business is not evolving, you know? Um, I would say, though, that the significant challenge that I faced was very similar in the sense as, as someone who is doing multiple things. Last year, this is a big example. Last year, I got really focused on like, okay, this is what I'm good at. So I'm going to focus on this kind of like throw, not throwing out the door, the many, many years of experience, but it was almost like I, so I'm very anti-niche for context. I'm very anti-niche. I don't believe in niching down. I feel that we are kind of today in a world where every, every brand is so multi-purpose. There is not one single brand that I know that is just doing one single thing. So given that I was like, you know, I'm going on this anti-niche road and I kind of melded in multi-potentiality into it and last year I fell into a trap of anti-niche becoming my niche (laughs) and uh, it, it was I like it got me I saw a boost in my business I saw how much you know things were selling out but I just felt so fucking like, what the fuck am I doing? (laughs) You know? Um, Because I I realized, I realized like, holy shit, I just put myself in this trap because Mm -hmm. I kept on saying this, 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 this. And then I wasn't listening to all the this, 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 because I'm like, you know what? I can find you in it. Why? Because around that same time I was having conversations and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like a revolutionary. Um, I'm someone who just dashes into the door. I, I don't really think much, you know, I'm like, I dash into the door. The, the logic will follow. Intuition lead the way. And so I, I was having a lot of conversations with people who were very solidified in niches. And, you know, great for them. I respect them so much because it takes a lot of work to craft the code for what, what, what works for someone. But because I was having those conversations, the anti-niche voice that was the whispers of myself, they were beginning to, you know, become noise from the outside. I started to see how I was listening to and applying patterns of someone else, despite my own success being my proof. And I realized, holy shit, I just booby trapped myself into a place. And I'm like, oh, like, what am I going to do? And so I was getting opportunities uh, late last year. I was getting opportunities that were out of this niche bubble that I created. And I was like, I literally was second guessing myself and I was like, wait, I can do this, but, but I'm in this niche. Should I, should I take on this project? Should I take on this client? 
And then I had like a sit down with my team. And so I have a very intimate team that handles all my different businesses. I sat down with my team and I was like, so this is what I'm facing. And they were like, do we really need to spell it out to you? <laughs> I'm like, um, <laughs> literally, I'm just there. They're like, do we really just spell it out to you? I'm like, okay, so do like, just confirm with me. Did I like booby trap myself into this anti niche being my niche? And they're like, yeah, why would you do that? Why would you do that? And so we had to kind of go back to the foundations. That was the challenge. And I think every year, this has been my challenge of not forgetting my roots, not forgetting my roots. And I think the more you are in business, you get influenced very easily because you're sitting and you're part of conversations and you're in these rooms, but these million different voices, which is why intuition is such a powerful thing. And I was noticing how last year I was slowly but surely, I'm like intuition back pass, you know, you're the back seat. And so that was the biggest challenge. And so this year, I'm just back to my roots. And I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I am not booby trapping myself anymore. And so that was the biggest challenge. And I think um, the biggest lesson here was never, ever forgetting what is your core thing? What is your core work? What is the core thing that you're great at and not allowing the influence of like oh you you're really good at this so maybe you should do just that no don't mm -hmm. don't let that fool you it'll take you down a sewage drip like me <laughs> but the fact so, yeah. that you are willing to go into things like that and learn that and then bring yourself back i think that in itself as an entrepreneur is a huge skill to be able to be self-aware enough to realize like, oh, <laughs> look what I've done because it is going to happen. It's happened to mm -hmm. almost every entrepreneur I've ever talked to. And it's like you said, you're sitting in these rooms of very successful people too. And you're having a lot of conversations. And I was in a large group of very successful women and they were talking about visibility and every single one of them was talking about their social media strategy and I found myself sitting back and I was like you know what maybe I won't talk today and then at the very end of that call I was I was like my time or or no time and I was like you know what like this is why I do what I do I have to speak up because this is me because I had that little voice in the back of my head be like, oh, maybe I should put some more energy into into that. Yeah. And then I was like, no, it's not what came naturally to me and worked for me. And then I sat there and I listed all the things I was doing to get visible. And there were 10 plus things. And the yeah. person who was leading this group was like, I hope everybody was taking notes because yeah. <laughs> that was a really good list of things to do. And I, I genuinely hoped that helped the other people in that room yeah. see that they had more opportunities than just their social media strategy. Yeah. But if I was two, three years ago, yeah. I probably would not have said anything. But yeah. it's like you said, just reminding yourself of your roots because yes I can make social media work I wasn't yeah. bad at it but I got so burnt out and people mm -hmm. can tell you oh you were really good at that you should do that again like oh thank you that's great but I don't need to go down that path but it, yeah. takes, <laughs> it takes some trial and error to get there and I just want people to know that it is absolutely okay if you find yourself on one of those paths, but just to allow yourself to come back. And it's great that you have a team around you to to kind of confirm those things for you. Realignment, wait, <laughs> let's focus. But it's yeah. true. Like you've got to take the risks too. Like you have to be willing to risk and try things out, find out if it's right for you, or yeah. like take the bits and pieces that work for you and leave the rest. Because yeah. you are going to constantly grow and readjust and realign and all of these things. And you aren't going to get it perfect every single time. So I very much appreciate that you shared that story <laughs> with everyone because you are extremely <laughs> successful. And being Thank able you. to see that you can still fall, kind of fall into those certain places. Booby traps. Let's call it what it is. Yeah. 
you can be booby trapped and still find your way out. <laughs> You're Absolutely. never stuck with anywhere. You're never stuck. You've never failed. If you just keep going and listening to your intuition, like we've talked so much about today. So Sway, where can people find you to connect with you and potentially work with you? Yes. Um, right now, the best space is Sway to Success. If you just type Sway to Success literally anywhere, I will pop up. You will see my face <laughs> plastered everywhere. Um, that's the best way. But if you're also just interested in reframing your marketing, because I know 80% who are listening to this will all obviously say the same thing that I've heard in the 10 years that I've worked, which is I think I have a marketing problem and I'm challenging you. This is a very soft, polite challenge. Like I promise you it's not a marketing problem. So I do have a mini masterclass that's called Marketing Redefined, Redefined, which allows you to just reframe and redefine your marketing from a perspective that allows you to, again, which you've been saying, Leslie, to do things your way. So yeah, those are the two best places to play with my energy. Oh, and I highly recommend checking it out. So the links are below in the description. Click it, connect with Slay. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you so much for having me.